Now, before diving in, we're going to set things up in our Colab environment and introduce how this module plays such a critical role in object detection. The SPPF block enhances object detection by applying three max pooling operations to capture spatial information at multiple scales. This process creates a rich multi-scale feature map, enabling the network to better detect objects of varying sizes and shapes. Its efficient design reduces resolution while preserving key spatial relationships, all while optimizing computations for real-time applications. Next, we'll briefly look at the arguments this module receives during initialization. The values 256 and 256 are assigned as the input and output channels, respectively, while 5 represents the kernel size. In the forward pass, we define the same max pooling layer three times and run them consecutively. To ensure the input and output dimensions remain the same, each max pooling operation uses a padding of 2. This is because the floor division of the kernel size 5 by 2 equals 2. We can also run this section here for anyone interested, but let's move on to the visualization for a more intuitive understanding of what's really happening. We begin with the output from the previous stage, a C3K2 block with a tensor shape of 1 by 256 by 15 by 20. The first step applies a 1 by 1 convolution, reducing the channel count from 256 to 128 while keeping the spatial dimensions intact. This output is saved for later use and is also passed through the first max pooling layer. The output of the first max pooling layer is saved as well and then fed into a second max pooling layer. Similarly, the output from the second max pooling is saved and passed through a third and final max pooling layer. These three max pooling operations extract features at multiple scales while preserving the tensor shape of 1 by 128 by 15 by 20. This ensures no changes to the spatial dimensions during the process. Next, the outputs from the CV1 layer and all three max pooling operations are concatenated along the channel dimension. This step combines the multi-scale features into a single enriched tensor, increasing the channel count to 512 while maintaining the same spatial dimensions. Finally, the concatenated tensor passes through the CV2 layer, another one by one convolution, which reduces the channels back to 256. The resulting tensor matches the input shape, confirming that the SPPF block efficiently processes features, preserves spatial integrity, and enhances multi-scale representation. Now let's take a closer look at how feature maps evolve as they pass through the max pooling layers. This particular feature map, feature map seven, is the output of CV1 right before entering max pooling one. As shown by the scale at the bottom, values range from dark blue, minimum, to bright yellow, maximum. We can observe four key regions with high activations, on the left, in the middle, at the rear, and on top of the car. When this feature map is processed through max pooling one, we aggregate the maximum values from each five by five region. The result, as shown here, still preserves the four main areas of high activation, along with some less prominent regions. Passing this through max pooling, two continues the aggregation, producing the feature map seen here. Finally, after max pooling three, we still observe the key regions of high activation, though they have been further refined. Now let's reverse and revisit the initial feature map before any max pooling operations. Notice that it has a shape of 15 by 20, to illustrate max pooling, we'll focus on a specific 5x5 five five kernel region. The goal is to extract the maximum value within this patch and output it as a single value in a corresponding 1x1 one one area for the next layer. For example, applying max pooling to this patch results in the brightest green pixel becoming the output value for the 1x1 one one region as expected. Repeating this operation for max pooling 2, we find the brightest yellow value in the 5x5 five five patch, which becomes the output. Similarly, for max pooling 3, the brightest yellow value is again selected. These steps are performed across all 128 feature maps. In summary, extracting the maximum from a 5x5 five five kernel helps the model focus on dominant features, reducing noise and irrelevant details while preserving important spatial patterns. Max pooling introduces spatial invariance, making the model robust to small input variations. The 5x5 kernel size also captures features over a larger receptive field, 
compared to the 3x3 three three kernels used in convolutional layers, enabling the detection of broader structures. These properties make max pooling crucial for feature extraction, particularly in modules like SPPF, which efficiently combine multi-scale spatial information. Now let's run this in VS Code, but keep in mind that the pace will be faster in the code. It's important that we've covered the details beforehand. First, we'll perform the initial convolution CV1 and store the resulting tensor as the first element of Y. Next, we'll pass that tensor through the first max pooling layer and save the output as the second element in Y. We'll then feed the second tensor into the second max pooling layer and store the result as the third element. Finally, we'll pass the third tensor through the last max pooling layer and save it as the fourth element. With Y now holding four tensors, we'll concatenate them along the channel dimension and process the combined tensor through one final convolution layer, CV2. This completes the SPPF module. Since we've already visualized a feature map earlier, we'll skip that step here and move directly to the C2 PSA block. 